Hi, and welcome back. This episode is about the book The Blue Tattoo, written by Margot Mifflin. Much has been written about Olive Oatman, whose family was killed by the Yavapai Indians, who made her a slave. They then sold her to the Mojaves, who had her tattooed. Four years later, she was delivered back to white society. The novels and plays based on Olive's life are so varied that most of them contain a fair amount of fiction. In The Blue Tattoo, Margot Mifflin tries to find out the truth about Olive's life and how she was treated by the Mojaves. The Oatman family left their farm in Illinois in May 1850 and were joined by 20 other families. The wagon train of Brewsterites headed towards the mouth of the Colorado River, where they believed was paradise for the Mormons. The Brewsterites were a splinter sect of the Mormons who had objections against polygamy. At first, the travelling was uneventful. Every few days, the group stopped so that the animals could graze, while the men hunted and the women did the washing and baked. Some people died from accidents and tuberculosis, but the Indians were the pioneers' greatest concern. Another problem were the disagreements. Although it was safer to stay together, in October, half the party followed Brewster towards Santa Fe, and the others followed Royce Oatman, who continued west. In January, the Oatman group reached Tucson, where five families decided to settle. Now, there were only three families still travelling. They arrived in Maricopa Wells, where they planned to stay for a week, but Royce decided to push on with his family, ignoring warnings about Apaches attacking immigrants. By February 1851, the family was desperate. Their horse had died and their remaining cattle were weak. They had nearly run out of food, they had abandoned one of their wagons and still had a hundred miles of desert to cross to get to Fort Yuma in California. The Indians were angry that white people were invading their land and demanded livestock and food from the travellers. Most of the family were massacred by the Yavapai Indians with knives and clubs and the animals and food stolen. The lives of Olive, age 14, and her sister Mary Ann, age 7, were spared and forced to march for four days to the home of the Yavapai in Arizona to become slave for the Indians. After a year, the girls were sold to the Mojaves. The Mojaves hunted, fished, and planted crops. The Oatman girls were treated well by the tribe of about 4,000 and became fully integrated by allowing themselves to become tattooed in the Mojave tradition. Unfortunately, the harvest in 1855 was poor due to a drought. Some of the Mojave children and Mary Ann died. Olive was weak from lack of food, but she survived and had accepted that she would live out her life with the Mojaves. She did not realise that her eldest brother, Lorenzo, had survived the injuries from the massacre of her family and was trying to find out where his sisters were by writing to authorities at Fort Yuma. The purpose of Fort Yuma was to protect immigrants from Indians. In 1856, Lorenzo had found out that Olive was living with the Mojaves and asked for help to bring Olive back. After days of negotiation, Olive was traded for two horses, blankets, and beads. Olive, who was now 19, burst into tears when she heard this news. When Olive and Lorenzo were finally reunited, they did not recognise each other. Olive started going to church and met a Reverend Royal Byron Stratton. Stratton wrote the story about Olive's captivity. However, the book was written from Stratton's religious and white supremacy point of view, and he described the Indians as superstitious, lazy, barbaric, unfeeling, and dirty. His account was different from what Olive had said she experienced. St
Stratton gave lectures about Olive's captivity, but it was Olive that the audiences were more interested in. Olive became the featured lecturer. She spent years travelling and giving lectures. Olive was easily recognised because of her tattooed chin. She was deeply affected by her painful childhood and teenage experiences and struggled to adjust back into white culture. The life of Olive Oatman was extraordinary, but what is also engrossing in this true story is the disagreements among the Mormons, the challenges of travelling west across hundreds of miles in wagons, and how the Red Indian's way of life was disrupted. Thanks for watching.